You know, right? So this is our uh, dino day. This is our last day of Vivian being here. Oh, she's gonna go to dino, like I said, dino day. Uh, new motor, the other motor was on a gnarlier tune with like a 110 race gas style tune. So running this thing on 91 for the foreseeable future. And I just need to make sure it has a systems check um, with all the diagnostics to make sure um, she's ready for the long haul and to put miles on. She is going to go to superstition and uh, put big time miles in. So uh, right now we're just gonna run through the list. Obviously there was a couple things we talked about like um, things that didn't get done that we wanted to kind of have done that were like design features uh, and just finish work like powder coating the whole chassis like the solid rivets and front tin work front tin work like enclosure work uh, on the whole front of the chassis so getting those out of the way a lot of the stuff like it's really satisfying to talk about stuff like on our build series and our projects like oh we're gonna do this and do this and do that and really like we get a lot of wins like that at least I would say 85% of them where we're talking about what we're gonna do and then it comes to life and you can see it and it's there those three things were like just the hits like man I want that front tin work I want to just close it in and it'll look beautiful and it kind of has an unfinished look compared to the rest of the car and then like aircraft style hard rivets not like a pop rivet but like just they don't have like a little dot in the middle or a little stub in there or whatever you'd call that i'm gonna just botch that but aircraft style rivets in the interior is like a treatment because all the panels you know the whole truck the cab comes off and all the panels come off there is no welded stuff to the cab and the chassis except for the rear window sill and that's it so um, let's check this out i have my list just to keep me going um, this again just this is how we roll this is what we do this is what works for me so let's check her out are all wrenching right now just like on little tiny finish details got a light under there show you guys the skid plate because we have the big old belly pan in there it is a monster it's quarter inch uh, and it's beautiful when it's in but it takes two people for sure to put it on it's not a race car it's a high-end piece of machinery so sometimes you need a little more manpower to get that fitment just right Eric's here Colin's here Alex is here um, first and foremost I think we left off so like front hood um, mechanism fenders all that stuff was off last time nothing was painted we have the whole apical or forward painted and powder coated the other one we wanted is the rubber so like when you do your typical hood pin there's like the whole designs ones which cred makes like a really good spot but it, it always has like kind of a top profile like these are hull designs so they're like a pin that lives in here and it kind of this is your profile though and that comes out and it, and it lives with the clip and it's like the opposite way and the traditional way is a hood pin and then like a rubber auto fab style grommet and then when you tighten them too much they get like wavy and it's just not a good detail piece like on anything the other thing is usually like those were probably originally built for like a four pin style hood where you pull it off and you have like a buddy over there doing it and you kind of got to like weasel these things out or when you put them on you're going to kind of cut a palm slap them to seat down in there there's just a tight fit around 
the uh, stud here. So in, instead of that, we ran the traditional pin, but we got like a win in with um, not having like when this swings obviously like it's it's rotating in a way where if it has like a, a long um, a long like shank of, of rubber I guess it's harder to get out so we open that hole up and then it, the landing pad for the pin and like the the hole down is actually venting too and that's right above the shocks so it's not getting water into the engine bay or anywhere it's right in between the filter and the chassis like right at the shock bypass coilover area. So sturdy, painted. Now Joey can go in there. I'm gonna turn the lights on. So this thing is, is refined in here. It's very simple. There's like, this whole truck has kind of been a tasteful use of tubing versus like a abundance of plate work. We've gotten plate work in where it makes sense, but it's really turned into like an old, like a aviation style, small diameter chromoly tube uh, in like useful ways, a lot of triangulation. And that's kind of what's going on here. That cross member that was just dangling last episode, obviously you can see all the shock mounts are completely welded up. They're on the chassis, the tube connectors are in, and then this cross member is in, and there's like really good detail hits. Like this this band is, is notched around the intake tube, so it kind of flows all the way through. All the intake is powder coated. You can see like the safety wire details on that. Are you getting that part? Because it's over there. Because it's over there. The fender subframes are rolled, so it just follows the contour, and then there's standoffs for the tabs, and this really just keeps the upset minimal as far as like where the hood and the fender want to line up when you close this thing. And you can kind of just see our substructure. You can see the venting in here. Uh, it's a really, that's a clean little hit too. Uh, but everything, it's, it's almost like, these ones are harder for me because we're not in process of the build. It's like, this is how we're gonna leave her and, and how she's gonna go home, and there's a lot of stuff we've done in the last couple weeks. Jack this thing from Joey, just so you can see kind of the details from from my perspective. But the uh, everything's just came together really good, and I just wanted to kind of get through some of the details here, as far as like everything being painted, our hinges, um, even like some of the fill, you know, like a little tiny bracketry here for the fill, and then you can get a really good grasp off the intake here, where things are. But the whole engine bay is kind of cleaned up and, and that's what you get. So the other thing too that we want to touch on is heat insulation. So there is uh, quite a bit of DEI heat insulation. You can kind of see it over here. So every panel that's facing the engine or transmission or an exhaust is all has all that heat insulation on it. You can kind of see it here too. Uh, with that, every other panel that's that's not doing like heat deflection has Dynamat. So all, like everything, when you kind of knock on it, it's not a panel vibration anymore and there's none of those harmonics. The only harmonic that you really deal with now, which we're gonna fix too, is this guy. Like if you do it to anything else, you're good to go. Uh, just back on the front a little bit. Obviously all the arms and everything are powdered and fresh. All the panels are fresh. I mean, the whole car has been gone through for sure. Uh, I don't know if we've left anything untouched. 
and then you can see our skid plate, side skid plates, our main. So, ooh, yeah, see those little strings in the reflection? That's that gloss hitting. So, we figured out that Alex is also a professional aerosol painter. So like everything we've gotten uh, out of a can has been amazing, the best I've ever seen. So all the finish work is really impressive in here for us and it's all been a huge lesson. Ready to carry on? So last episode we talked about the mirrors running like that billet uh, class one style mirror. These are the closest that we found through CarTech and then we just formed like a base plate and obviously like this base plate, it's not just for style but it's for functionality because if you just had like a little, even a triangle or even something smaller than that, you know, any kind of load on this thing is gonna upset the sheet metal and the surfacing. So this distributes all of the load and it also like ties into our styling throughout the car. So both of those are on there. Um, I guess we can kind of move into the inside. Something else to note too while we're here is the super cab windows. Eric sourced um, some period correct proper super cab windows. They're, they're just a sealed deal just like the rest of it. So it's not actually adhesive, it's just gasket. Um, and then got a solid clean out on these. He's scrubbed on them and razor bladed them and brought them back to life. So that's a sick win. You can kind of see this whole, if you want to just check this thing out, door panels are on. Uh, everything's finaled in here as far as dash, instrumentation, Third C, all the panel work, the enclosure work. Um, there's also some cool uh, like windows, viewing windows for the shocks back there. I think we got footage of that before this thing was filled out because once you put the seats in here, it feels so vast and spacious and then you put the seats in here and it turns into a cockpit. C cockpit, yo. See this thing? So, talked about doing an impact mount. That's what we have. And then our door panels too. These guys, so this is kind of, a, we started with a door card on Eric's black bug. The biggest stuff was the door panel. So, all this is aluminum form. There's one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, five piece, so five piece door panel all welded and blended and painted. We did like a big three dimensional guys and this was a simpler thing we talked about just, just keeping it very uh, typical and just, I think it works for this being like a hot rod style truck, it's just a door card. And then we put a bunch of design into this thing. So this is actually, it's all functional design, right? So a uh, speaker, um, I guess opening, I was gonna say like extraction, but that doesn't really work. Um, speaker mesh, this is uh, our latch mechanism that we kind of engineered into here. Uh, Matt and M26 did our logo into there. And then this is our pole. So this is all like all the hardware here is, is tied into the actual door, not like the door uh, card itself. So you can 
Dude, you could probably stand on that, but you know, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, Todd at Expert Auto Upholstery. Uh, been kind of wanting to build a relationship with him and he's always reached out about doing stuff. I see stuff that needs to go away on there. Um, reached out to him as far as taking this on for our first project together and he killed it. I kind of drew patterns in here of where, of where I wanted the inserts and then he went to town, got those done for us and he got them done in about five days. I, the first phone call I had ever talking to him, I was like, hey, I hate to scumbag you on something but I gotta do this for the first time. Uh, can you do this in a week? Same with Matt. Matt got all that handled. The design, as far as this goes, um, very, like I just, again, keeping it correct and keeping all the language the same with the rest of the truck. Like the flared holes are reminiscent of all the dead pedals and the shifter mount. Um, that was just something that was like corresponding through here. And then having that, like that raw aluminum ties in. Obviously the handle, this was one of the biggest things I took for design is I looked at the shapes of just the roll up and I looked at how I can incorporate that. And so there's a lot of like tapers in there and just steps and this all just kind of made sense to keep it simple. Uh, the lines, where did those tie in? These tied in somewhere, stitchy. There, that, that was tie into here. If you like see here, all this, like we had all these intersections here where there was returns. So all these panels are like, they're like interlocked together where they, they like holster each other and register. And they, that's not only like to, to make that a strong surface, but it's also to kind of seal it up. So there's not just like dead butt panels like that where they're just butted up. And that, that was one of the things we wanted to detail out was like to put that aircraft solid rivet, which is like a countersink. Um, and it's just a little less robust. This still is a good vibe, but I think like finish wise, if this thing comes apart, to coat the whole chassis, uh, then you know we'll incorporate the solid rivets into the next phase. Uh, but everything in here is pretty fire. If you like, look back there. If you can see back there, I know we have B-roll of it too, but you can kind of see where the shocks are, and that's all. Ooh, that's all viewing window. So we'll see the longevity on that stuff. I think as long as like it's acrylic and it's like a hard acrylic, so it's not. It's supposed to be scratch resistant, but like I don't think any of that stuff works like that um, we just need to to treat it right and if it needs to be clean just kind of wipe it appropriately with like a microfiber and something else yeah i think the whole vibe in here is um, i love that it's raw like and it makes me nervous about keeping up on it and keeping the rust out of it but like that contrast of of powder coated panels like a satin panel and like raw aluminum and then raw tube work uh, with like all the prep on it and the like the haze uh, it's an awesome combo. So we have like some of the tin work that we'll talk about in the back. We just finished and we couldn't get it to powder in time, but the way that it complements, it's kind of like a black and silver theme that, that runs throughout the truck and it actually works pretty well. So you can kind of just take a view of what we got going on. We also have PRP bags in here, um, one per driver and, and co-driver. And that's just a soft bag, but it's, I'll show you how it's mounted. It's pretty nice. So these things are great to have in a car. But you can see everything's consistent with fender washers, 516's hardware, so it doesn't blow out. And then I guess, I don't know if you guys are wondering, but the impact as far as the socket on there, that's a one inch that's gonna get all the wheels off. And that's kind of just your typical program that you'd run. You don't really run that for anything else. It's just to change the spare.
obviously like some of that stuff we talked about on the powder coat list, kind of getting like the, bez the bezels and stuff muted uh, and just not standing out as much was one of Eric's goals too. And it totally works out. Eric's also talking about like as cool as the patina is and stuff in here, I think he's gonna wanna do uh, f like fill the top surfaces and paint just the roof like at the body line, uh, uh, satin black. So similar to like the wing here. But you can kind of see all the back panels are now enclosed. So fully sealed and you can see some of the Dynamat coming through on the backside here. Uh, batteries in there with service lights. Uh, these are the pre fuel filters hanging out back there too. Just see everything's pretty tidy. Speed case and then uh, jack handles registered in here. It's spring loaded and then it's got like a a kind of a backup pin in here that doesn't let this thing slide like if there was a hard hit it doesn't let it like load the spring and pop out uh, so it's just like an extra measure uh, big fan of lanyards so everything here has a lanyard so if you do pull pans on anything the pins just hang out on the car same with the fuel fill this has a dry break and it's also a fill so this spins off so same thing we want to keep that all on the car and then we have our jack back here so we talked about the jack going in this way and it just worked perfect to have it horizontal mounted instead of vertical. Um, everything's like on a pin, a release pin. This thing just shuffles right into here and this is kind of your register. License plate. And then we have fluids on each side too. So those are mounted, yep, they are horizontal. Uh, screw your lids on, you're good to go. So there's the skid plate we talked about. See, this is, so this is eighth inch here. It's like corner cap with ventilation in here. That ventilation keeps the exhaust kind of flowing through here. And then there's extraction, right? So flow comes in, goes out. You can see kind of the exhaust coming out here so you can get a grasp that that kind of goes through. And remember it pops through the frame and then it goes to the headers running like a tri-Y. Uh, one of the other parts about this belly pan or skid plate is the register on the front. So this is all part of the chassis now. And what happens is when I say register, it's like something, uh, you know, slips in like a, almost like a holster. Uh, and the, the quarter inch here goes into this eighth and it, and it holds it so the skid plate in the front can't be peeled back or damaged um, when you do a hard bottom or catch any kind of rocks or anything. Uh-oh, I heard that. While well, we're under here. Might as well kind of keep looking. So you can see some of the Dynamat treatment and then also some of the heat shield. Powder, everything's fresh. Individual bungees for limit straps on the upper links. So we got a lot of good finish wins in here. Obviously like we're missing a little bit of paint on some stuff, but everything else is really dialed. Um, Eric's here. We're gonna hit the dyno today. But what we'll do is we'll have uh, Eric come in. Oh, uh, there's brake lines. I think we talked about redoing the brake lines in the front too. So, everything's cherry. Ready to go. You guys, this is Eric Connor. You may or may not have met him. You've seen him with uh, Bug Vader. Saw him with the Tundra. Uh, we did the testing in Glamis. We did mods to that thing, and now we have the Tundra right here. It's just a new girl. But one of the important things with you is that Eric's been loyal and true to me, straight up. And what I mean by that is like when I first met you, you came up here and it was nighttime, it was dark, and you were dropping off the, the bug. He's like, hey, he's like, here's the deal. Like, you know, if you can do this and like, I like to get the stuff done quick and I'll like, I'll be good about the like, like pay and this and that. And he, and he said, you know, it's, if you can keep doing work for me and get this stuff done, I'll keep bringing you work. And he's like, I want to work with you on stuff. Yeah. And 
now like we have this yeah. and this is special because this gave us a real chance to obviously we didn't build the whole car but we rebuilt this thing to the point where there was frame rail there and a little bit of weird tubing in the back yeah. and the front bulkhead and that's it and we built this whole thing and plumbed it and assembled it and tested it and tuned it and yeah. just did everything and so like that chance that we got with Eric has been huge and it's like let us learn and, and gain so yeah. much and, but you've you know, proven yourself through all these yeah. Deals, you know? Yeah, and I've watched like I've even I see myself. I'm like, oh god, man, we're doing better. Like, cause a lot, you know, yeah. from where we started to like where it is, where we're at now, there's been like big gains, and it's even stuff that I can see, and it's hard to see your own stuff. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you, and if you want to talk about this, now it's your time. You know? So, the name we know, the name Vivian. Right? Yeah. Um, but this has been something that probably wanted to do for a long time, but at least five years. I've always looked at the Tundra and it worked well, it did what I wanted, but it just didn't have my style, didn't have my look, didn't have what I always, you know, just, you know, vision having, you know, and then it snowballs, it snowballs into something that's just incredible, you know, every single thing we did was taking the truck to another level, another level, another level, and now I just look at where it used to be to now, it's just night and day, and, um, the look is the most incredible thing now. I look at my truck and I just, I'm in love with it now. You know, it's like, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. It's, it's like, it's what I visioned in my head it would be someday and now it is. And then to top it off, it it's so functional, so so much better. It works so much better. It it drives so much better. It it, it the, the wheelbase is so much better. The, it, it's so much more stable. It It's just everything you could ever imagine you'd ever want in a truck and I look to you, you know? Yeah, and it takes, that's the thing about clients, like it's tricky because every, when you're in a business like this, every client has a different personality mm -hmm. and it's a different situation. You gotta like read these people out and you gotta figure out like making sure you get what you what you need from these guys yeah. and it goes both ways. But when you have someone that's receptive to like, hey, I think we should do this. Hey, I think we should do that. Hey, it's yes. gonna be X amount, but we should probably do this. And you get a, yeah, do it, do it, do you, do you. Yeah. And that's where you get like a result like this, where you let someone go and then you get this, this amazing recipe. And that's like this truck, it, it's, like again, you know, back to yes, it's a Jubera front end. Yes, there's four feet, four and a half feet of frame rail under there. Mm -hmm. But for what it is now, it's a completely different truck and it's so drivable. That's the part that's amazing. Like we've banked on the wheelbase and the track width and the travel numbers and the up travel and like the whole setup to the point where it's so predictable and you, you can drive it as physically hard and fast as your brain can react to stuff. It, yeah. It's like that, you know what it's gonna do. It's like it's like having a dirt bike that has fully tuned suspension and like you, you pop it and it does like amazing shit and you know it's gonna do that every single time and you can drive it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like, it's this kind of thing that's almost a luxury pre-runner, but it's also like a utility pre-runner. Like it's, it's built for hardcore fucking. And like the inside, the same thing. Like it's got the appointments, like a race car, like a GT3 car or something where yeah. it's like, even if it's like a Lambo on the outside, it's like there's bare bones in there and it's body on white and it's just like a suede dash and like controls. You know, it's the same kind of vibe. Like it's, it's comfortable, but it's right on the verge of just being a straight machine for duty. Um, and it's street legal. And so when I, when I say my style, my style is, a vehicle that you look at it draws you a, a little bit of attention but you don't think of it being so crazy but it draws you into the internal guts of the of the truck you know or mm -hmm. the car and this this is so that you know like you just want to see what it really what made this vehicle so internally good versus the outside and the pretty paint and all that stuff is not me this is me like it's beat up on the outside but internally it's beautiful inside and it's, it's function over over looks, you know. I'm I'm a hot rod guy, and I used to put hot rods and cars on the rack and look under them. They look like crap, <laughs> and but on, on the outside yeah, they're beautiful, exactly. you know. Or a, even a low rider, it's beautiful True. paint, beautiful interior. But you put it up on the rack and you look underneath it, it's just it's it's not pretty. And, and this is this is what I like. I like to see the. The, the true bones being this this amazing and functional and beautiful. You know? Yeah, and it's it's cool too because it's contrast, right? So yeah. I like contrast, like black and white. Like when I was going to Art Center, everything at Art Center was black and white, mm -hmm. um, and it lends itself to colors too. Because when you put a color in there, it's beautiful. And and the same with this is contrast is this old '70s retro like cab with patina on it, and then you have like hardcore functional shit under here. 
uh, all like trophy truck style spec, you know, trophy truck spec hubs and rear end and travel numbers and wheelbase and it's just, it's a complete, like it's just a, a like a rolling functional art piece here, like a just a, a perfect testament to like a, a functional off-road vehicle, like a yeah. hot rod, desert hot rod. Exactly. And that's what you get. So it's it's been beautiful and I'm happy. Like the one thing I told Eric is like, I am pissed at you for not powder coating the chassis because yeah. it's now he's screwed or he's going to have to maintain like the rear portion of the chassis or paint that and then like the now the middle like the interior in the cabin space is pretty sealed yep. so i think you'll get a win on keeping that like mason taylor did that with his cage we did yep. and he kept it pretty clean for a long time but i know better with these things i mean yeah you're never finished with them ever and so i just know after one season me driving the, the shit out of it, it's going to come back and there'll be things i want to improve and and do new things here or there and it gives us that opportunity again to work together and make it to that final final level totally and do a couple little tweaks or mods to make it even better so you can yeah. always make it better so so it's been a huge thing and uh you know today we're gonna dyno it um over in agora hills with alex and new era and just get some street time on it too it's raining so we're gonna just already go through the motions of uh, figuring that stuff out and cleaning the thing up and yeah. you get to do a pre-run on how you're gonna do that. Yep. Yeah. And that's that. So I hope, really hope you guys enjoyed like the, the, what is this, 13 now? Is this 13? The 13th yeah. update of Vivian. So we went from Tundra to Vivian. Yeah. And now this is Vivian. And if you wanna know where like Vivian came from, um, Pretty Woman is the movie. That's the perfect example. And if you look at who Vivian is in that movie, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Perfect, yeah. Um, and that, that I, w I won't go into details because I'd probably say inappropriate words, but <laughs> that's what we have. And uh, again, I'm grateful for you. Yeah, I'm And grateful. I know that, like, I, that's what I've been talking to Eric. I was like, when you get your list, because that's what's gonna happen, we're gonna have a list. So like, yeah. get through the season, enjoy it, use it, put miles on it, and then once you have that list of like refinements yeah. uh, or adjustments or additions, like I said, you have to promise me I can do the front 10 work. Cause yeah, that's yeah. the one thing I'm like, ah, I need to do the 10 work. Give me the 10 work. Mm -hmm. So we can like look in there and it'll be all badass and mesh and enclosed and kind of tie in from where the skid plate goes up and bring it all through, you know, like where it looks just epic. Right. So we'll have some things, but for now, I think you can really just enjoy the dyno session next and then enjoy just catch Eric, you know, on yeah. his Instagram, uh, SoCal Eric, and you know, we'll just see this thing floating around and yeah. floating around. Oh, no, you know what we gotta do? We gotta do a glamorous, glamorous day. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Joey's jonesing for that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll shoot this. What we'll do is we will go on the same portion of Sand Highway yeah. And then we will do like the same stuff we did with F or with the Tundra. Yeah. And we'll let you guys compare the differences. Absolutely. Is, yeah. And we'll try to clip 130. <laughs> yeah. Because it was like 122 yeah. last time. It was outrunning the, the Escalade at 118 oh, on the freeway. Yeah. I outran it. So I'm thinking 122. Yeah, we'll have to get a, a drone <laughs> fast. <laughs> Just don't let Eric see. Yeah. yeah. So thank you guys. I hope you had a good Monday. Uh, enjoy the update. Enjoy Vivian. And we'll uh, see you next week.